Blessed day everyone and welcome back to our discussion about our grade 9 music. For today, we will be having the improvisation of appropriate accompaniment to selected music from the medieval Renaissance and Baroque period. And right after this, we will be continuing and finishing this first quarter with another topic entitled Performs Music of Medieval Renaissance and Baroque Periods. And this is still part of our module. Let's start with the introduction. This lesson gives an overview of the importance of improvisation of music from the medieval Renaissance and Baroque period. This invites you to interact creatively with nature or with the things that surround us. With all of these things, you can be able to create or either relate with the music from the Western classical period. In this lesson, you are expected to improvise an appropriate accompaniment to selected music in Western music. Again, this will be our topic for today. For additional information, you will be noticing underlined words or phrases in our presentation. Kindly take note of it because that might be your answer in your learning task. We will be starting this lesson with a video example on how improvisation sounds like. So we will be having a local example. Our very own Filipino national artist, Professor Levi Silerio. Let us watch how Maestro Levi Silerio improvised using a leaf. So here's a video on how Professor Levi Silerio improvised using a leaf. Inimbitak po si Mang Levy upang tugtugan kayo sa dahon. how Professor Levi Silerio showed his improvisation. Now, let's define what improvisation means. Musical improvisation is the creative activity of an immediate musical composition which combines performance with communication of emotions and instrumental techniques. Let's now have the different definitions of the musical improvisation. Musical improvisation is a creative invention, fusion, or advancement in music that plays an important role during the Western classical times. It is a performance given extempore, or when you say extempore, it is without planning or preparation. It is to play or sing extemporaneously by inventing variations on a melody or creating new melodies, rhythm, and harmonies. Let's now have the medieval period. Medieval period is a period wherein melodic improvisation was an important factor in European music. From the earliest time, the first detailed information of improvisation technique appears in 9th century. This method instructs singers on how to add another melody to a pre-existent liturgical chant in a style called organum. Throughout the Middle Ages and Renaissance, improvised counterpoints over a cantus firmus constituted a part of every musician's education and is regarded as the most important kind of unwritten music before the Baroque period. When you say, Cantus firmus, it is the practice found both in church music and in popular dance music. In the Middle Ages, mostly the music was written and unaccompanied. Let's now go to Renaissance period. Following the invention of music printing at the beginning of the 16th century, there is a more detailed documentation of improvisational practice in the form of published instruction manuals, mainly in Italy. Improvised melody over ostinato chord 
patterns made elaborate embellishments of melodic lines and invented music extemporaneously without any predetermined schemata. So when we see ostinato, it is a repeated pattern or phrase. Just like this musical illustration. Keyboard players likewise perform extempore freely formed pieces. Improvised counterpoints over a cantos firmus constituted the part of every musician's education and is regarded as the most important kind of improvisation practice. Let's now go to Baroque music. The kinds of improvisation practice during the Renaissance, principally either the embellishing of the existing part of the creation of an entirely new part of parts continued into the early Baroque. Ornamentation began to be brought more under the control of composers, in some cases by writing out embellishments and more broadly by introducing symbols or abbreviations for certain ornamental patterns. Performers improvise ornaments in basso continuously Keyboard players improvise chords, voicing based on the figure based notation. However, in the 20th and the early 21st century, as common practice, Western art music performance became institutionalized in the symphony orchestras, opera houses, and ballets. Improvisation has played a smaller role. At the same time, some contemporary composers from the 20th and 21st century have increasingly included improvisation in their creative work. Let's now go to instruments used in the medieval Renaissance and Baroque music. Let's define first what is a musical instrument. Musical instruments are musical devices created or adapted to make musical sounds. In principles, any object that produces sound. Let's go to medieval. In the Middle Ages, mostly the music was vocal and unaccompanied. The church always wants to remain the music as pure and solemn, nor it was less distracting. Later, unmusical instruments were allowed in the church, such as bells and organs. Fourth, it was mainly used only to observe important days in the liturgical times. Until now, in the Catholic, there are already musical instruments during the Mass. Musicians or minstrel who traveled, they use musical instruments as they perform on streets, corners, or courts. Let's now have the instruments of the medieval period. Let's now have flute. Flute is a tubular wind instrument in general or very specific wind instrument from bamboo sodii of the grass family also known as bamboo. So here is a flute. We also have fiddle or violin. It is a bowed string musical instrument, also known as violin. It is the highest pitched string instrument of all. Harp. It is a string instrument that has a number of individual strings running at an angle to its soundboard. The strings are plucked with the fingers. Lute. It is a pear-shaped string instrument with a fretted fingerboard. That, those are the instruments during the medieval period. Let's now have Renaissance. During the Renaissance era, the musical activities shifted from the church to the courts. Composers were more often to experimentation. Based on this, more composers use musical instruments in their compositions. For instruments that produce softer and less bright sounds, were preferred for indoor events. While louder and more brilliant sounding instruments were preferred for outdoor events. Let's now have the instruments of the Renaissance period, starting with cornet. The cornet is a brass instrument similar to trumpet, but distinguished from it by its conical bore, more compact shape, 
and mellower tone quality. Juiced Harp Also known as Jaws Harp Juiced Harp or Gumbart is a musical instrument consisting of a thin wood or metal tongue fixed at one end to the base of a two-pronged frame. Let's now go to our Baroque. Baroque instrumental music was often composed for the organ or harpsichord. String instruments such as lute, violin, viola, cello, and double bass. Brass instruments like the trumpet, horn, and sackbut were used during this time. Popular wind instruments include the recorder, flute, avo, and bassoon. Occasionally, Baroque composers utilized other unique and lesser known instruments which have since become obscure. These are the instruments during Baroque period. Organ It is an instrument of one or more pipe divisions of or other means for producing tones, each played with its own keyboard, played either with the hand or the keyboard or with the feet using pedals. So this is how organ looks like. Harpsichord is a keyboard instrument in which the strings are plucked. So this is how harpsichord looks like. For more videos and informations about the musical accompaniments, you can visit this video in our channel so you will be able to learn more and hear and see how this instrument sounds like and looks like. I will be placing the link for this video below. And now, let's go to our last topic for this first quarter in music, which is performs music of medieval Renaissance and Baroque period. Let's offer a review on what we have learned from our week one up to now. For the medieval period, We've learned about imitations of voices and pitch, Gregorian chant, liturgical music, and the monophonic music. For the Renaissance period, some of the things that we've learned is all about madrigal, mass, polyphonic music like the Kyrie and Agnus Dei. And for Baroque period, we have music genres such as opera, cantara, concerto grosso, and concerto, choral music, and there's a lot of instrument during this period. Let's now have the other informations for you to remember about our featured era. Western music started by the fall of the Roman Empire. That's why medieval period is called as the Dark Ages. Polyphony is a vocal music which has several melodies sung at the same time. Unlike monophony, which has only one sound, polyphony has several melodies. Some musical terms developed during the Baroque period was still used up today. A cappella music came from an Italian term which means in the manner of the chapel. Again, a cappella. Instrumental music includes the use of instrument only. So vocal music is not part of this. During the 16th century, instrumental music flourished rapidly and several techniques were made. Liturgical music of the medieval period is a sacred music. When we say sacred music, these are music that are exclusive for the church only. At the beginning of the Middle Age of the Western music, there were limited numbers of instruments only. Only few instruments are used during the time. Madrigal is a secular music of the Renaissance period. When you say secular music, these are music that can be played inside nor outside the church. And of course, a cappella uses human voice only, no instruments. And after that, let's have the performance time. I have my example of performance task. If you like to do it with your students, you can do so. The title of my performance task is My Messiah Performance. It was adopted from the very famous work of George Handel's Hallelujah, the Messiah Chorus. Let's see our instructions. 
Listen to Handel's Hallelujah the Messiah because this will be your musical material that you will use for the performance. It is a 20-second music only. Again, Handel's Messiah Hallelujah is from Baroque Peyu. Let's listen to our music piece to be used. So there you go, that was George Frederick's Handel, the Hallelujah, the Messiah. Again, this will be our musical piece to be used for our performance. Now, let's go back to our instruction. With a friend, or a family member, or a solo, create a simple step. Use the music piece for your performance. So you'll be using Hallelujah, the Messiah of Handel. You can also sing it in a cappella if you like. And you can also use musical improvisation with the use of any material around you. Just look around you and see what musical accompaniment you can improvise. Just be creative. And speaking of creativity, to be more creative, you can even use TikTok app for this activity. You can perform it with your peer or your friends or your family members or you can do it in solo. And here's how will you be graded? For choreography, you have 35%. Timing and basic rhythm, 35%. Posture, 15%. And mastery is 15% for a total of 100%. I'm sure all excited for this performance. And for the link for this music that you're gonna use, you can look at the description box below. Take a video of your performance and submit it to your teacher. That's all for our grade 9 music for our first quarter lessons. I hope and I'm sure you learned a lot from this. Don't forget to subscribe to be updated with the next videos that we'll be featuring. Please share and watch all our videos for you to be able to help in our mission with this YouTube channel. Thank you very much and bye-bye!